nothing. I belong here. I'm done. I graduated high school. Won't hurt. I don't want no sorrys from nobody. Keep your sorrys. We were One sleeping time. together the whole time. It's about me knowing if this man is my daddy. How you yes, you are. Me? You I'm you call my pump. Y'all don't care if. Stop it. Stop. Please. I'm pregnant. But at, we never pregnant used, when they. Yo, we when never we met, she was pregnant. If it happens that you are the father, then you have to step up and Step-up. support. Thank you. Ms. Hooker believes that the defendant's son, Mr. Abraham, is the father of her 10-month-old daughter, Kanaya. She says the public denial by Mr. Abraham's family has caused her pain, and she's in court for two things. A DNA test to put the matter to bed once and for all, and an apology for the pain she's been caused. Unfortunately, Mr. Abraham isn't in court today because he was killed three months after Kanaya was born. How have you been affected by Ms. Baker's doubts about Kanaya's paternity? I'm just sad sometimes. I try to deal with it now. Like, I really don't care no more. That's how I feel. I don't care anymore. I don't care who feel nothing about my baby. I don't care. It just seemed like everybody else looking upside my head like I'm an animal or something. Like, Every time I'm well, sitting down doing something, they looking at me like I'm just, I, I'm the outcast of the group. She looked like me. So why is a problem? That's why I say I don't care about nothing. Ms. Hooker has really strong emotions about the denial of her child's paternity. But the Bakers, Mr. Abraham's family members, don't care about that at all. So, Ms. Baker, explain to the court why there's doubt that Keyshawn is Kanaya's biological father. My son was on vacation, and we, we kept hearing that Denia was pregnant, but then when we finally found out for sure, he told me, he said he wasn't the only boy that had messed with Denia. Mr. Shepard had also made his mother promise to conduct a DNA test of Ms. Hooker's child to see if he was truly her father. Unfortunately, he isn't around to see the results of that test because he was gunned down. Before he died, Mr. Abraham told his mother that he knew of another man who had slept with Ms. Hooker, and that man had told him something that puts the paternity claims Ms. Hooker is making in question. You know, what did the other young man say? He told Keyshawn that when he wasn't around, he was supposedly sleeping with Denia. Miss Hooker, I have to ask you, was there another guy? No, cause that's why it's funny, because how could somebody tell me who I was sleeping with? Nobody in the room was, was in the room with me when I was sleeping with somebody. What do I have to lie? Well, that's an interesting laugh. Ms. Hooker's mom says that Mr. Abraham never actually denied Ms. Hooker's baby. She says that he was always over at their house playing with the baby and taking care of her. She says he only had doubts when he was angry with Ms. Hooker. Now, if that's true, it puts into question the claims Ms. Baker has been making. Ms. Hooker's mother also says that the Bakers have always talked smack about her daughter and they all hate her. From what I ever heard about my family, nobody ever talked about her. It all occurred so in her house. Then when I, I know my mom said something about, she had a birthday dinner and my mom did tell me, she said something about, she think I didn't like her or, you know, things like that. Maybe her perception of what other people view of her is just her perception because she, she has to understand that sometimes it's hard. Well, we can actually understand that, can't we? But the child doesn't have to be a reminder that her brother's not there. It can also be a reminder that her brother left a legacy. It can be both. You just gotta know how to slice it. Keyshawn accepted that he was the father of this child. Child. Yeah, in my mind. From my the mind. way he behaved at your home. Mm -hmm. But mom, Ms. Baker, did he have, did he give you any proof or anything that there was this other guy? Because Ms. Uh, Hooker testified that this was the only person she was sleeping with at that time. I think he just went off what they're saying in their circle of kids. So Mr. Abraham had no evidence and just thought that Ms. Hooker was sleeping around while she was with him. At this point, you kind of think it's obvious that the baby would belong to Mr. Abraham since he has no evidence that Ms. Hooker was two-timing him. And the truth is, Ms. Baker, and, and you're right. Right now. You're right. Judge, my daughter really feels some type of way. Of, it's not that she feels some type of way. It's like she more hurt behind the obituary. And Miss Carolyn has explained to her about the obituary, how the obituary went, but in her heart, she feel like Miss Bland left her out of the obituary on purpose. So, and that's why she have so much animosity toy, towards Toy. I just feel like this. This come back and this is the baby. I don't want her. I don't want no sorries from nobody. Keep your sorries. I don't want no sorries. Well, things are starting to boil over, and Miss Hooker is starting to make violent threats. If she feels so strongly about the child being for Mr. Abraham, then it must be, right? Well, let's test that theory. Since Mr. Abraham isn't alive to get his blood tested, the DNA test was done to determine if there's a relationship between Mr. Abraham's parents and Kanaya. Kanaya Abraham. It has been determined by this court. The percentage of relatedness between Ms. Baker, Mr. Abraham, and Kenaya Abraham is 0%. And this, this is why right here. Ms. Baker, are you all right? Do you need no. to sit down? Do you need it's to sit not. down, ma'am? 
That's insane! And Ms. Hooker was just here laughing sarcastically and screaming at Mr. Abraham's family. And she did all of that knowing that there was a possibility that he wasn't the father. That's an insane thing to do. But it gets even worse. Ms. Hooker decides that she wants to physically fight Mr. Abraham's sister. So you owe my mom's apology, though. That's who you owe one. No, excuse me. Because you know you slept with somebody else. Ms. Hooker. Girl! Ms. Hooker. No, 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 no. Hey, go in there. Go in there. Go in there. You do too much. I know this has been emotional for everyone. And so, uh, Denia and her mom are sitting with Dr. Jeff right now. Uh, yes, I am. I've always been glad. You That's why you never glad. knew it. You thought you was... Holla at your girl. Let's rock. Miss Percy is in court today to prove that Mr. Gale is the father of her daughter, 26-year-old Tedria Glenn. Mr. Gale denies this totally and is in court today with his wife to prove that he isn't Tedria's father. Miss Percy also claims she spent over $200,000 to raise Tedria and Mr. Gale contributed absolutely nothing to that. Mr. Gale says this isn't his fault as he only found out that Tedria might be his daughter when he was 15 and that he is scared that his wife might leave him if she finds out that Tedria is his. Miss Percy is convinced Mr. Gale is only denying Tedria because of his wife. It's Percy. Yeah. Why do you think Mr. Gale is denying your daughter? Because of his wife. I don't know why she won't let this man be a man and Excuse be me, with his Honor. children. Your he Honor. needs to spend time my with his children. My wife never stopped me from seeing any of my kids. <sighs> Mr. Gale, that is so not true. Every time my daughter calls him, it's like, Oh, I can't talk to you right now. Miss Percy says that anytime Tedria calls her father, he never picks up because of his wife. Mr. Gale says he does this because he doesn't want to disrespect his wife. But how does that even make any sense? Speaking to your child doesn't mean you're disrespecting your wife, right? How if would I you knew that was my daughter, your wife? I this could is talk your daughter. Her, if that, I knew that was my daughter. It's your daughter. I could talk to her wherever it's your daughter. I please. Mr. Gale, tell me, were you all in a committed relationship? It was committed. We was seven yeah. years. It was no seven. Years. You How long was it? Like four or five years. Things are about to get complicated. Mr. Gale says he got married in 2003 and was with his wife for 15 years before they got married. And get this, Tedria was born in 1988, which means that Mr. Gale started his relationship with his wife around the same time Tedria was conceived. Miss Percy admits this and says that she and Mr. Gale were sleeping together even when Mr. Gale was dating his wife. So if you were together 15 years, that would put you way before you were together with your wife way before right, we broke that up a Glenn long was, time but ago. we were still sleeping together we slept together we were sleeping time. together the whole time you was with tanya no we wasn't we yes, slept we together was. one time your honor he's still trying to sleep with <gasps> That's cute. Oh, don't you? lie. Don't lie. Mr. Gale shocks Judge Lauren by saying that he's not the father because Miss Percy already had another person tested for Tedria's paternity. To him, this means that there's significant confusion around her paternity, and it's far from a decided thing that he's her father. Miss Percy admits this but says, since the first person who was tested wasn't Tedria's father, then Mr. Gale has to be. Okay, Miss Percy, that's great logic. But what if there's a third person? I asked my brother for... Mr. Gale's number. When I asked my brother for Mr. G Mr. Gale's number, I called Mr. Gale and I initiated a paternity test. I said, you know, I've been hearing all my life that you've been my dad and I look just like you. Me and my brother just mm -hmm. look just alike. And, you know, I've been hearing all these rumors, but it's like, at that time, I felt like I was old enough to find out for myself. Well, that's just horrible behavior from Mr. Gale. You can't ask a teenager who may be your daughter to pay for a paternity test. And it doesn't make it any better that you want to go half and half with her mother on that test, especially when you know that you were having unprotected intercourse with her. When I asked her, I said, tell your mother if see if your mother can go half of me on a paternity test. That her was mother after the never fact. got back to me, never said that anything. That was after the fact. That mm -mm. was just recently. Mm -mm. No. That was just recently this no. past year no. when no. you was like, oh, you need to find out no. where you really come no. from. No. Like as if I'm a charity case. Miss Percy, when you got pregnant, did you say to Mr. Gale? According to Mr. Gale, none of this is his fault because he never knew that Tedria was his child until very recently. And then Miss Percy and Mrs. Gale start going at it. Miss Percy, when you got pregnant, did you say to Mr. Gale, I'm pregnant and I think it's your child? No, I didn't. You didn't tell no. him a thing. My daughter was two. This man came to my house and my brother kept looking at Tedra. We all kept looking at Tedra like, damn, she looking different. She looking like this, this man here. 
And I'm like, he, he looked at her and he was like, oh, is that my daughter? Tedria says that she's built a good relationship with Mr. Gale, but Mrs. Gale doesn't respect that relationship. That's why she's here to know if Mr. Gale is her father for real and know for sure where she comes from. And that makes sense. Come on guys, who wouldn't want that? I'm thinking about you. It's about mm. me knowing if this man is my daddy. Yep, we've been it. We've been talking for this past year. And when I say when we be on the phone, it's all laughs and giggles and we talk like this was meant to happen. It's come a time to where every time I get on the phone, she's like, oh, you're on the phone with your little friend. Mm. Like as if I'm nothing, I'm somebody. The emotion is raw and you can see that this hurts Tedria a lot, but Mrs. Gale doesn't care. This looks like a reality TV show to her and she could really care less what the DNA tests say. Tedria provides evidence outside of a DNA test to prove that she's Mr. Gale's daughter. The evidence is the resemblance she says exists between Mr. Gale and her. You do in fact believe there's a possibility that Miss Glenn could be your husband's child. When you look at her, do you see a resemblance? Could you show her she the picture? She know, um, she I, trying to I be don't funny. know. I have so evidence. I can't what evidence she do you like have, Miss Lynn? To me, so Jerome, will you hand me Miss so Lynn's evidence, pictures. please? She and looks she said, like her mother see. to we me, but her. that doesn't mean that's not her father. Yes. The first piece of evidence is a picture of you, me, and Mr. Gale. And that's Mr. Gale. Yep. Wow, that's cold, Mr. Gale. Well, let's follow Mr. Gale's lead and check out the DNA test, too. That's all we can do at this point. Mr. Gale, you are not her father. I hear me, boo. I'll let your girl. Let's rock. What, what you talking? <laughs> no problem. About her. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. You glad. Yes, I am. I've always been glad. You That's why you never glad. knew it. You thought you was going to have Mr. Gale. Oh, please. Mr. Gale and Miss Percy. I can't hear any more of this. What? Miss Percy is a real piece of work. How can she be arrogant despite being exposed as a liar so clearly? I know that's not what you wanted to hear today. What you don't know he probably is when you left have. the courtroom, the first thing he said was, I feel really bad. He says, and he asked, <laughs> could he come give you a hug? And I just told him to give you a moment. Now they can live happily ever after. Well, and don't I don't ever think... have to worry about me. L Let all me all tell me. you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Ms. Chappell is 101% certain that the defendant, Mr. Todd, is her daughter, Walisha's biological father. She says that Mr. Todd only denies Walisha because his fiance, Ms. Collins, doesn't want Mr. Todd in Ms. Chappell's life. Mr. Todd says there's absolutely zero chance that Walisha is his and argues that Ms. Chappell will stop at nothing to pin a child on him that isn't his. Mr. Todd also claims that Ms. Chappell destroyed his window, so there's that. So, Ms. Chappelle, why do you feel you're owed $2,475 for these expenses? Um, because um, I was had a job, Your Honor, and he was babysitting the baby for me. And after he didn't babysit anymore, I had to start paying seventy-five dollars a week for babysitting fees and lost wages. And I didn't have a babysitter, and I couldn't keep up with the babysitting fees, so I had to quit my job, and I don't have a job anymore. And here's my papers right here. Miss Chapel says Mr. Todd owes her some money for stopping his babysitting duties for Walisha, and Mr. Todd says that's a lie because he never actually watched the baby. He also says he's never been in a relationship with Miss Chapel and only ever had casual intercourse with her. You two were in a sexual relationship, right? right? Yes. yes. It wasn't and no what relationship. Of, it wasn't a relationship. No. no. You were just having sex. Just having sex. If you were having sex and she got pregnant, were you using protection every time? No. 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 And they, the so, no. we met, I was pregnant. But at that we time. never used, when they, yeah, we when never we met, she was pregnant. pregnant. She we was already pregnant with a baby. But, but, but the other baby, baby. why Lisa? Oh, with someone right. else's All baby. Right. What? Are we hearing that properly? Okay, Ms. Chapel had a baby in her belly before she met Mr. Todd. She gave birth to that child and now has given birth to another baby that she claims belongs to Mr. Todd. Why is it you doubt that Walicia is your child? Because at the time, she was messing around with other guy and by me being young and, 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 and just doing crazy stuff, I go and mess with her at the same time too. So she was messing with men all at one time. But this one, never my girl, I had, I was in a relationship with someone yeah. at that time and she was messing around too. Mr. Todd repeats that he's never dated Miss Chapel, and at the time he was messing about he was in a relationship with another person. He's saying yes he may be a cheat but he ain't no baby daddy. Good for you Mr. Todd. However you don't need to be in a relationship to get someone pregnant. So Miss Chappelle do you admit that you were having sex with other people in addition to Mr. Todd during the window of conception? No you honor. She a liar. She was not even in the picture you honor so she has she, nothing she just, to do with this. When, we was what together picture that was? 2011, oh, I was pregnant was? with someone oh, else, baby. Our baby was God, already here when they met you, Honor. All right. Our baby was here before she came in the picture. All right. All right. 
Miss Collins now wants to talk about the windows. She says Miss Chapel destroyed. She says that Miss Chapel stole Mr. Todd's phone and then busted her windows while she was in it. I have proof well, and I have a phone report that she come where I'm my in. wonders out. On do you my have car. that evidence here today? I do, no. ma'am. I'd like to see it, please. Thank you. This is and an incident report it. which says there was damage to private property. Vehicle. And I do have the receipt, too, Your Honor. Windows were damaged. I'd like to see the receipt, too, this please. This is proof, too. This is the receipt for the window repair, total $375. Yes, Your Honor, that Ms. Chappelle did. Why would you even bust someone's car windows? This doesn't make Ms. Chappell look good at all. Anyway, Ms. Chappell says she doesn't care about whether or not someone's window was busted. She only wants the DNA test for her child, Walisha. You don't have to rush, Ms. Chappell. We are getting there eventually. I said, well, we can move her in just so we can get tests to see if this is your baby. Therefore, that we can move forward with it. It didn't work out that way. We was taking the baby when she's out having sex with different guys, coming in different night, times of night while she's gone. Okay, and so you feel like you moved her in and then she was avoiding getting the DNA test. And what made me have doubt I that this is not his baby, she doesn't look like Mr. Todd. Ms. Chappell says she's certain that Mr. Todd is her baby's daddy because when she told him she was pregnant, he said he would be there for her and would accept the baby. Okay, that sounds great and nice, but you know what that isn't? It isn't a DNA test and it isn't proof that Mr. Todd is Walisha's father. The fact that he may have promised to accept the pregnancy doesn't mean he's biologically related to the baby. Anyway, here is what the DNA test says. Mr. Todd, you are not the father. Oh. And you no, and you're you smiling, Miss Chappelle? She a pretty yes, girl. because no, at the end pretty, of the day, this is the problem with the day they no. say. I ain't having sex with no one else. You want I know this only man I was messing with at the time. It. Yep. I know it. Ms. Chappelle, you were obviously having sex it. with at least one other person. Ms. Mitchell here says that she first met Mr. Jordan at a courthouse when he was taken to court for paternity testing. She says he didn't submit to the test but claimed her and began paying child support. Mr. Jordan says he paid child support not because he felt that he was Ms. Mitchell's dad, but because he felt pity for her. Besides, he says he had no real relationship with Ms. Mitchell's mother, who's not in court today because she died of breast cancer a while back. Did you have doubt in your mind, though, during that time? I've always had doubts, ma'am, but it was nothing I could do about it. He never tried I had to be a father. I had accepted the fact that I had a one night affair, bit bam, thank you, ma'am, with her mom one time. And after that, I never thank saw her again. Thank you for telling me that. I appreciate for seven that. Thank to eight you years, for okay? having that image in my head. You say you did your best to try to establish a relationship. Yes. Wow, that's harsh. Ms. Mitchell says that Mr. Jordan may have stepped up in terms of providing child support for her, but he never gave her any attention. Even when she came to him about fixing her car, he only gave her instructions and let her do the whole thing. That, of course, had disastrous consequences. What was your understanding, Ms. Mitchell? My understanding was he was my father and we were supposed to try to build a relationship, but he never came around. Every time I try to call him, he always blow me off. Every time, it, it, it was like every once or twice a year, I see him every two, three years. I had asked him to get my car fixed. When he uh, said, yeah, I coach you, he said, I will walk you through it. The person laughing right there is Mr. Jordan's other child, Miss Wagoner, and she's supposed to be Miss Mitchell's elder sister. And she's laughing at a situation where Miss Mitchell almost lost her life. That shows you just how psycho she is. Did you stand there with her? Yes, yeah, I did. he stood there with me. He stood there with me as I was doing my own breaks. He made sure that all the books were so-called tightened up. I left, went to work the next day. My brakes came off on the freeway. Wow. Yes, I had. I, I was scared, I didn't know what to do. So I had to sit up there and figure out how to get off the freeway without crashing into the wall. So I grabbed the, uh... You still here? That's dangerous, you know that. Hey. That's such a horrible thing to say. Mr. Jordan and his other daughter are laughing at a situation where Ms. Mitchell almost lost her life. At this point, you'll probably be hoping that Mr. Jordan isn't her father at all because it must be exhausting trying to be relatives with people like this. Ms. Mitchell says Mr. Jordan has continued to be a standoffish father even at her most vulnerable moments. She ever called me, y'all, when she wants something. I need That's something. not true. That's not so true. So I want to understand from your childhood, what was it like? Did you have a relationship with him after this day? Do you remember being in that courtroom when you were seven years old? Well, when I was seven years old, I remember him. I remember sitting on a bench, and the judge asked me, do you know who your father is? I said, no. That's when he came up and said what he said about, well, I'll be her father. Okay, Mr. Jordan, how's that even better? You didn't know that your daughter was pregnant and had a child and lost the child? That's just horrible parenting, no matter what. You claim you tried to call him daddy once. Yes, I did. And what happened? 
He told me to call him Jordan. Is that true, Mr. Jordan? I tell everyone to call me Jordan. Except her. Mm -hmm. That's his <laughs> your, daughter. Your daughter. Well, I raised this one. Like that. <laughs> That's his daughter. So why is it that she can't call you daddy, too? I'm not, hey, I'm not Because I'm even, not your daughter? I, I don't know. That's why I'm here today. It seems there's no limit to the horrible things that Mr. Jordan will say in this courtroom. He doesn't seem to care that the DNA test may show that he's Miss Mitchell's father. He doesn't care about her pain, her struggles, or anything. One even starts to wonder why he's here at all. Now let's hear directly from Ms. Wagoner. How did you regard Ms. Mitchell growing up? I'm the first one. So, okay. of course. Of course she always thinks she first. I am the everything. first one. We don't know nobody else. Don't whatever. Girl, stop whatever. 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 This is fake right here, all this crap. <laughs> That's all no, fake. What you are she is, is not like that. That is all fake. No, do you girl, girl stop playing. Whatever, you don't whatever. do what I tell you to do because I'm big No, no, no. Girl, you don't tell me to do nothing. Whatever. And you do it. No, I don't. You do it. You know what, guys? This is exactly how sisters fight. And it seems Ms. Wagoner accepts that Ms. Mitchell is her sister. She just doesn't like Ms. Mitchell that much. Anyway, it's time to see the results and see whether Ms. Mitchell has spent her life living a lie or Mr. Jordan has missed out on a lifetime of meaningful connection with his biological daughter. Mr. Jordan. You are her father. What do you feel, Miss Mitchell? I guess I just want him to treat me better as a yes, daughter. Yes. The thing is, is, like, I would like to leave this court with, with one frame of thought, okay? Oh, what is your frame of thought? Anytime, anytime your woman, your wife, your girlfriend tell you that she's pregnant, I suggest any and everybody go talk to Dana.